In this video, we will explore the osteology of facial bones. We will begin with an introduction to the osteology of facial bones. Following this, we will delve into detailed descriptions of each individual facial bone. Before concluding, we will explore some important clinical correlations associated with these bones. The facial bones, integral components of the skull collectively termed the viscerocranium, are positioned anteriorly to the neurocranium. This group of bones serves as the structural foundation for the soft tissues of the face, playing a crucial role in defining facial aesthetics and expression. They encompass and protect several vital anatomical features, including the orbits, the nasal cavity, the oral cavity, and various sinuses. Additionally, the facial bones surround the openings to the proximal structures of the digestive and respiratory systems, specifically the oral and nasal cavities. The facial skeleton is typically composed of 14 bones. These include two maxillae, which form the upper jaw, two zygomatic bones, commonly known as cheekbones, contributing to the lateral contour of the face, two palatine bones, which are part of the hard palate of the mouth and the nasal cavity floor, two lacrimal bones, small and fragile, forming part of the medial wall of each orbit, two nasal bones, which form the bridge of the nose, two inferior nasal conchi, the vomer, a singular bone that contributes to the nasal septum, and the mandible. The only movable bone of the skull, forming the lower jaw and housing the lower teeth. In some anatomical classifications, the hyoid bone, an unpaired and unique structure located in the upper neck, is also included as a component of the facial bones. The hyoid bone is distinctive in that it does not articulate directly with other bones, but is suspended by ligaments and muscles. Beginning our detailed exploration of facial bones, we will start with an in-depth description of the maxilla bone. A central component of the facial skeleton, the maxilla comprises two symmetrical bones that are fused at the midline, thereby forming the upper jaw. Each half of the maxilla possesses four surfaces, each with distinct anatomical features and functions. The anterior surface, the most visible part of the maxilla, contributes significantly to the contours of the face. It houses the upper teeth and forms the majority of the bony structure of the upper lip area. The orbital surface forms a portion of the floor of the orbit. The infratemporal surface, a posterior surface, forms part of the infratemporal fossa. The nasal surface forms part of the lateral wall of the nasal cavity. In addition to these surfaces, each maxilla bone features four processes. The frontal process extends upwards to articulate with the frontal bone, playing a key role in forming the lateral aspect of the bridge of the nose and the medial margin of the orbit. The zygomatic process extends laterally to connect with the zygomatic bone, thus forming part of the zygomatic arch. The alveolar process houses the sockets, alveoli, for the upper teeth. Lastly, the palatine process extends horizontally to form a significant part of the hard palate, the bony roof of the mouth. The zygomatic bone, widely recognized as the cheekbone or malar bone, comprises a pair of symmetrical bones. It forms not only the conspicuous prominence of the cheeks, but also significantly contributes to the lateral walls and floors of the orbits, thus providing structural integrity and protection to the eye sockets. Each zygomatic bone is distinguished by three specialized surfaces, each with its unique anatomical orientation and function, the jugal surface, anterolateral in position, presents outwardly, forming the visible part of the cheek, the orbital surface, anteromedial in orientation, is part of the orbital floor and lateral wall, positioned towards the inner side of the orbit, and the temporal surface, posteromedial in location, contributes to the formation of the temporal fossa. In addition to these surfaces, the zygomatic bone exhibits two important processes, the frontal process, which extends upwards to articulate with the frontal bone, playing a significant role in the formation of the lateral rim of the orbit and the lateral wall of the frontal sinus, and the temporal process, which projects posteriorly and fuses with the zygomatic process of the temporal bone, forming the zygomatic arch. The palatine bone consists of a pair of symmetrical bones that are joined at the midline of the oral cavity, forming the posterior part of the hard palate. Each palatine bone is composed of two plates and three processes. 
The two plates are the perpendicular plate, contributing to the formation of the lateral nasal wall and the nasal septum, and the horizontal plate, which forms the posterior portion of the hard palate. The three processes of the palatine bone include the sphenoidal process, which articulates with the sphenoid bone, the orbital process, contributing to the floor of the orbit, and the pyramidal process, involved in the formation of the pterygopalatine fossa and the pterygoid process. The lacrimal bone consists of a pair of small, symmetrical, rectangular-shaped bones, noted for being the smallest and most delicate within the facial skeleton. Each lacrimal bone comprises two surfaces and four borders. The two surfaces of the lacrimal bone are as follows. The lateral or orbital surface forms a part of the medial wall of the orbit, its smooth, slightly concave nature facilitating the proper positioning and protection of the eye, and the medial or nasal surface extends into the nasal cavity, contributing to the formation of the middle meatus. The four borders of each lacrimal bone are the inferior border, which aligns seamlessly with the maxilla, aiding in the continuous contour of the medial wall of the orbit and the lateral wall of the nasal cavity, the anterior border, articulating with the frontal process of the maxilla, the superior border, forming a segment of the orbital rim and integral to the orbital structure, especially at the lacrimal fossa, and the posterior border, adjoining the ethmoid bone and contributing to the Delicate bony framework separating the orbital and nasal cavities. The nasal bone consists of a pair of small, symmetrical, and oblong bones. Each nasal bone is composed of two surfaces and four borders. The two surfaces include the external surface, which forms the bridge of the nose and contributes to the facial profile, and the medial surface, which faces the opposite nasal bone at the midline, forming the upper part of the nasal septum. The four borders of the nasal bone are the lateral border, articulating with the frontal process of the maxilla, the inferior border, which connects with the cartilaginous part of the nose, the medial border, aligning with its counterpart to form the nasal bridge, and the superior border, which articulates with the frontal bone, contributing to the formation of the nasal part of the frontal bone. The inferior nasal concha, also known as the inferior turbinate, consists of a pair of facial bones distinguished by their uniquely curved lamina structure composed of spongy bone. Each inferior concha bone features two distinct surfaces, the medial surface, a convex surface facing the nasal septum, and the lateral surface, a concave surface facing the outer wall of the nasal cavity. Regarding the borders of the inferior nasal concha, the inferior border is free and extends into the nasal cavity. The superior border, more complex, is divided into three portions. The middle portion is particularly notable for its three processes, each with distinct articulations, the lacrimal process articulating with the lacrimal bone, the ethmoidal process connecting to the ethmoid bone and playing a role in the structural integrity of the ethmoidal labyrinth, and the maxillary process which articulates with the maxilla, assisting in forming the lateral wall of the nasal cavity and contributing to the structure surrounding the maxillary sinus. The voma, an unpaired facial bone, forms the posterior inferior part of the bony nasal septum and is pivotal in dividing the nasal cavity into two separate passages, essential for proper nasal function. The structure of the voma is characterized by two distinct surfaces and four borders. The right surface faces the right side of the nasal cavity, while the left surface faces the left side. These surfaces are covered by a mucous membrane, aiding in humidifying and warming the air as it passes through the nasal passages. The voma also possesses four borders, the inferior border, articulating with the maxillary and palatine bones, forms the base of the nasal septum, the superior border, connecting with the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone, completes the upper portion of the bony nasal septum, the anterior border, fusing with the septal cartilage, provides a transition from the bony to the cartilaginous septum, and the posterior border, a free border instrumental in forming the coani, the posterior. Nasal apertures that open into the nasopharynx. The mandible, commonly recognized as the lower jawbone, is distinctively horseshoe or U-shaped. As an unpaired and median bone, it stands out as the only mobile bone within the facial skeleton, playing a crucial role in fundamental functions such as mastication, speech, and facial expression. The structure of the mandible can be divided into two primary components, the horizontal portion, known as the body, forms the lower jawline, 
and the rummy extending upward from each end of the body are the two perpendicular parts. The body of the mandible, characterized by its curved and posteriorly concave shape, presents a comprehensive range of anatomical features across its external and internal surfaces, each serving specific functional purposes. On the external surface, there is the mandibular symphysis, located at the midline, which is a faint ridge indicating where the two halves of the mandible fused during early development. The mental protuberance, the point of the chin, is a prominent feature contributing to facial aesthetics. Nearby are the mental tubercles, providing the chin with its rounded shape. The mental foramina, typically positioned below the second premolar tooth, allow for the passage of the mental nerves and blood vessels. The oblique line extends from the mental tubercles to the anterior border of the ramus, marking the attachment for several facial muscles, including the depressor labii inferioris and the depressor anguli oris. The internal surface features the sublingual fossa, located above the mylohyoid line, accommodating the sublingual gland, the submandibular fossa, below the mylohyoid line, housing the submandibular gland, and the mental spines, also known as genial tubercles, providing attachment points for the genia glossus and geniohyoid muscles. Additionally, the body of the mandible has a superior border, known as the alveolar part, containing the dental alveoli for the lower teeth, and an inferior border, the lower edge of the mandible, providing structural strength to the lower jaw. Each ramus of the mandible, quadrilateral in shape, consists of two surfaces and four borders. The lateral surface, the outer side of the ramus, serves as an attachment area for various muscles, such as the masseter muscle. The medial surface, facing the interior of the mandible, includes the mandibular foramen, the entry point for the inferior alveolar nerve and vessels. The four borders of the ramus are as follows, the anterior border, the forward edge of the ramus, provides attachment for the temporalis muscle, the posterior border, forming the back edge, leads up to the condylar process, the lower border constitutes the base of the ramus, and the upper border, the top edge, includes important anatomical landmarks such as the mandibular condyle and the coronoid process. In the clinical correlation regarding facial bones, we will focus on the Lefort fracture classification, a key concept in maxillofacial trauma and surgery. This classification categorizes maxillary fractures into three types, each with unique characteristics and treatment implications. The Lefort eye fracture is a horizontal fracture of the maxilla, typically occurring above the level of the teeth, separating the lower maxilla, including the teeth, from the upper face. Common causes include direct blows to the lower or mid maxilla, and clinically, this fracture may present with mobility of the upper jaw and malocclusion. The Lefort II fracture is a pyramidal type of fracture, with the teeth at the base and the nasofrontal suture at the apex. It involves the maxilla, nasal bridge, and orbit, typically resulting from a blow to the lower or mid maxilla. Patients may exhibit bruising around the eyes, raccoon eyes, mobility of the mid face, and changes in occlusion. The Lefort III fracture, also known as craniofacial disjunction, is a severe form of facial injury. The transverse fracture line passes through the nasofrontal suture, maxillofrontal suture, orbital walls, and zygomatic arch, essentially separating the facial skeleton from the cranial base. Clinically, it presents with massive facial swelling, bilateral raccoon eyes, and possible CSF rhinorrhea. Complications arising from facial fractures can include malunion, leading to misaligned bone healing, facial deformity, affecting aesthetic appearance and function, dental malocclusion, resulting in a misaligned bite, mid-facial retrusion, where the middle portion of the face is set back, and in ophthalmos, a condition where the eye appears sunken due to changes in orbital volume or structure. In conclusion, the facial bones, which constitute the anterior and inferior portion of the skull, form the underlying skeleton of the face. This section of the skull, known as the viscerocranium, comprises 14 bones in total, including six paired and two unpaired bones. These bones collectively give shape to the human face and form the cavities of the anterior skull, encompassing the orbits, oral cavity, and nasal cavity. Beyond their structural role, they provide crucial protection for the contents of these cavities, as well as the neurovascular components of the face.